This is Jocelyn. Jocelyn's in her mid 60s and she's been having some struggles with her hair lately. How would you describe your weekly hair routine? Pretty simple. I just wash and blow dry. It's, it's hard because I try and do like the stylists do. I try and, you know, use my round brush and get volume back and it just doesn't happen. <laughs> what is your biggest hair challenge? Volume. Definitely volume. My hair is so thin now. As Jocelyn's gotten older, she's noticed changes in her hair. And you probably have too. It's completely normal. Today we're gonna to talk about some of the struggles that you may be facing with your hair as it matures. And I'm gonna show you some quick fixes for these very common issues. Let's go. Throughout this video, it's important that we talk about what happens to the hair as it ages. I've said it before in my videos and I will say it again. You cannot improve things if you don't know what you were trying to improve. The first thing that happens is the hair loses pigmentation. Going gray is a completely individual experience. For some people, it happens really young, and for others, it happens later on. The way that it comes in is also completely different depending on the person. Some people get very white, some people get salt and peppery, some get streaks of white, some have it clustered in the temples, and some have it evenly distributed throughout the entire head. Let me know in the comments how your grays are coming in. In. I really find this variation between people to be fascinating. I find it so, so interesting. There's a huge movement right now towards embracing your natural gray hair, and I'm such an advocate for that on this channel. I think it looks so healthy and shiny, and you can see that from Jocelyn's natural color. If you've embraced your natural color, or if you've gone lighter with your hair to manage it, and you're now a blonde, you may have noticed that your hair picks up a yellow cast sometimes. When hair has no pigmentation or very little pigmentation, it picks up things from the environment. Chlorine and other chemical residues in water, UV rays from the sun, and even oils from the scalp can give gray or white hair a yellowish tone. My first aging hair tip for you, whether you're a man or a woman, is to regularly include a purple product into your routine. It sounds very strange, but purple is the opposite to yellow on the color wheel, and because of that, it neutralizes yellow tones and turns them bright and icy. It's literally magic. It is amazing how it works. I am so excited to partner with the hair brand Better Not Younger today because this company stands for everything that I talk about here on this channel. They make products specifically designed to combat the changes that come with aging hair. This line, you guys, is all about empowering women who want to look and feel beautiful in the stage of life that they are in. I'm obsessed. When I got this package in the mail, I was like, wow, this is absolutely brilliant. This really is about embracing your age, about combating the issues that you may be having with your age and with the changes that come with it, but in a way that's empowering and not shaming. And that's exactly what I am doing here. And that's exactly what they are doing there. So it was a match made in heaven. I've been trying their products out for a few months now and I am obsessed. So I'm excited to bring them to you and to show you to see what you guys think. The first product that I use on Jocelyn here is one of my favorites from this line and it is the Silver Lining Purple Brightening Shampoo. You want to include a purple shampoo into your routine about twice a week, two or three times a week, if your hair is white, salt and pepper, or blonde. This one in particular is awesome because it neutralizes yellow, but it also hydrates, strengthens, and adds volume to aging hair, which is the number one concern amongst my clients, Jocelyn included in that. It's a very common concern with aging hair. I've had a lot of my gray hair clients tell me that they don't like purple shampoo when I recommend it because even though they do work, a lot of them are super drying and gray hair already has this tendency to be frizzier and drier. It's so smart how this product was created because it's not only a color neutralizer, but it's also hydrating without being heavy. It tackles every gray hair aging issues in one little bottle. If you wanna step it up even more in terms of repair, you can also get the purple butter mask, which has a five butter blend. That's heavenly, it is so, so nice. I used both on Jocelyn today and her hair turned out incredible and you will see that 
in a minute. The next thing I want to talk about is how the hair can get thinner over time. After menopause, estrogen levels decrease and this can lead to hair thinning and even hair loss. Jocelyn doesn't have any issues with hair loss, but she has expressed that she's having a hard time getting and maintaining volume. This is an extremely common issue, so I'm going to show you how to combat that right now. My second tip for you is to get yourself a fantastic haircut because there is no styling in the world that will be able to combat a really bad haircut. I didn't cut Jocelyn's hair, so I can't take credit for it, but this cut is literally the perfect example of a phenomenal haircut for a woman in her 60s who's experiencing a loss of density. A really easy way to give the illusion of thick hair when your hair is fine is to ensure that the baseline of the hair looks dense. The shorter and blunter you go, the heavier the baseline looks. I have really fine hair, and if you look at my hair in this clip, and then you look at my hair in this clip, you will notice how much thicker my hair looks when it is shorter and blunter, and it's just because a dense baseline tricks the brain into thinking that the hair is thick overall. It's unfreaking real. If you're struggling with thinning hair, try getting a haircut like this. It will look like you have three times the amount of hair overnight. Another fantastic thing that Jocelyn's hairstylist did is cut in these really soft, wispy bangs. Her bangs are not too short. They're soft enough that they diffuse the fine lines around her face and her eyes, and they bring a ton of attention to her best features, which are clearly her eyes. Bangs cut like this on a woman like this draws arrows right here, and that's where you want the arrows drawn because her eyes are just magnificent. I did an entire video on the best haircuts for aging hair, so I encourage you to check that out when you're finished watching this video. I'll leave a link to it in the pinned comment below. The next thing I wanna talk about is styling your hair to really maximize volume and make that volume last all day long. Getting volume in your hair when you're older is one of the most universally flattering things that you can do. Jocelyn mentioned earlier that she tries to do the blowout thing that the stylists do, but she can't seem to make it last. And I'm willing to put money on the fact that it's because she's making a few key mistakes. Just a few small changes will yield huge results. The first mistake is not using the right hot tools. If you don't have one already, get yourself a blowout brush and ditch your flat iron. A blowout brush is honestly a life-changing hot tool. It's way easier to control than a round brush and a hair dryer when doing your own hair, and it yields amazing results. Blowout brushes can be super hot, so you have to be very careful. I started by prepping your hair with the Better Not Younger heat protection and taming spray. This is great because it acts as a shield so that the heat doesn't damage the hair, but it also has vitamin E to reduce frizz. So it's like a heat protector and a styler in one spray. Now pay attention to how I am positioning the root when I am blow drying the hair. Instead of blow drying the root in a downwards motion, you have to blow dry it all the way up until the hair is 100% dry. You wanna move in small controlled sections and blow dry that root up in every single section. This is the number one way to get volume to last you for the entire day. And if you use a blowout brush, it's actually very easy easy to do this. You just have to move your arm up. That's it. It's not complicated. You don't have to fiddle with too many things. The second mistake is not freezing in the volume. When hair is hot, it is malleable. So if you blow it out and then you brush it out, you're going to flatten it. You want the hair to cool in a voluminous position in order for it to set its shape. My favorite way to do this is to put in a few Velcro rollers at the top of the head in a mohawk placement, making sure to push the hair forward before rolling it back so that the roller sits on its base. I like adding two also right here beside the face just to amp up the volume right here at the front. Velcro rollers do need heat to work. The hair has to be hot and malleable and it has to cool down down in its lifted shape on the roller or it will not do anything. If your hair has cooled down by the time you roll them in, it's okay. Just use the diffuser attachment on your blow dryer to heat them up for a minute and then let them cool for 10 minutes or so on the head before taking them out. Honestly, this is a small thing. I talk about it in so many videos. You guys might be like really bored of hearing about it, but it's the one thing that makes a huge difference not only in getting volume, but having that volume last 
for several hours throughout the day. I am leaving links to all the Better Not Younger products in the description box below. They are Glam Girl approved, so I highly recommend that you check them out for yourself. If you're interested in learning more about Velcro rollers, I did an entire video all about that and you can watch it right now. <laughs>